Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you guys all had a great weekend. Before we get started today, this is very, very important. I uploaded a video, I think it was Friday or Saturday. It was on the blacklist, and I put the link here in this pinned comment. So after the show, click on this pinned comment that's in the chat here, and there's your link to the show that I'm referencing. Now, why is the show important? Well, YouTube has somehow censored. I don't know how they did, but they did. It's one of the most important videos we've ever done because in the TV series Blacklist, they literally mentioned Corona and myocarditis. I could not believe it. A video like that should be seen by twice as many people as normally watch the videos because those are the kind of videos you guys could share with people to show them the foreknowledge and pre-programming before all these events happen during the pandemic. So this is very important. Right now it's sitting at about 5,000 views. Normally the videos hit about 10,000. It's got about half the views that normally these videos get. So very, very important. Today we're going to examine the mark of the beast conditioning secretly hidden in international passports going back to 2008. Yes, ever since 2008, the international passports, and there's your clue, right? Because Revelation says they will cause all, great and small, rich and poor. That's the whole world to receive the mark. And so, an international passport would be a clue. Now, is this the mark of the beast? No, it's not. But this is conditioning. Let me break this down for you guys a little bit because it's a little bit confusing for some people. Obviously, if you didn't get a vaccine, you can still buy and sell, can't you? But that doesn't mean that that won't later be wrapped into one umbrella of buying and selling at some point will definitely be a component to it. This is why I've always said that these things are preconditions or conditioning or programming or desensitizing you to the final mark. Now, the mark is being seeded into all aspects of gatekeeping. Gatekeeping of humanity. Control mechanisms throughout our human experience. It's basically been seeded in to our subconscious as a precursor for the final mark. The final mark will incorporate all these unrelated aspects into one. Now, I want to be clear here. They're setting the preconditions now, aren't they? There's a theme that goes along with these preconditions for travel having to have a passport, for health, having to have a vaccine. And eventually, that will all be wrapped into buying and selling. It will come under one umbrella. They want to have complete control of your life, right? So this makes sense that this is what will end up happening. They want to not only control your buying and selling, but your travel and your health. Because guess what? If you can't travel without this passport which is what Trump was trying to do, right? The national ID, which will be rolled into these passports. Somebody was telling me in the military that they're now requiring you guys, there's no more military ID to travel. Now they want you to have passports as well. And that's because this will all be rolled into the market at some point. So this makes complete sense because then guess what? You can't escape. If, it, if the mark, part of the mark will be your ability to, to travel or not to travel, then you won't be able to escape what they're going to force on you, right? You'll be stuck in whatever town or city you're in and you won't be able to move. So this makes sense that they would do this because Revelation says, the beast shall cause all rich and poor, great and small. How will he be able to do that? Well, by basically affecting every aspect of your life. So as we examine passports, which is the travel aspect, remember? And your ability to move about. Now this will all begin to make sense to you. 
because what they do is they seed in what will ultimately be the final product. They have to seed it in on a ritualistic level so that you finally submit or they force you to submit. And this will all be rolled out as some kind of access, a single access mark for all other areas of the human experience. So, again, the passport does not prevent you from buying and selling, not yet. But when they roll this travel thing into buying and selling, obviously it will. Now, it's already happening in certain places in the world. Look at China's social credit score. So, unless you receive China's mark, you won't be able to move about, travel, buy and sell. That's already happening with the social credit score. So, that gives you an idea of where everything is headed. And this is why we have such a close relationship with China. Regardless of what our presidents say, we will never, ever separate from China because secretly they want the world to look like China because China has made the most prog progress towards the mark. Good morning. Now, a lot of people ask me, what is the mark? And I'll say this three or four or five times. Never accept the mark willingly. Never accept precursors or conditioning to the mark willingly. But revelation is clear. All will receive the mark. Let me read it out of Revelation. Now, from this point forward, as I'm reading from the King James Version, you can do a word search on whatever words I'm saying to find the scriptures. I don't want to get laden down, popping back and forth between scriptures. I'm just going to read them to you. Verse 16, And he causeth all, both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The key words in that passage are, causeth all. Now, the only exception we have that causeth all which is every single man, woman, and child on earth, right? We can't start reading into trying to make our own assumptions about that passage. If it says causeth all, that's what it means, right? Because otherwise you're trying to change the words of Revelation. Causeth all is causeth all. Now this bothers a lot of people because they think, well, that means all of those people are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. But that's not what it means. And this is how I'm going to break this down for you. The only exception that we are given in Revelation, the only exception to the word all, is a small group of people that somehow resist the mark. And they resist worshiping the beast. And they get a special seat with Christ, don't they? They get a special seat. Now I'm going to continue reading. This is verse 4 of Revelation. And you'll, you, like I said, you can search the words I'm speaking and look these verses up even as you're watching the show now. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is a special small group that gets to reign with Jesus over who? Who will they, will they be reigning over? Well, probably the rest of humanity who lived before the time of the mark. Right? Right? Because obviously, we have the entire history. Now, the Bible talks about these other people. And it's up for debate whether or not these special beheaded group will also reign over the angels with Jesus. Some say he, they will, some say they won't. I'm not going to debate that today. 
But the fact is, is they are in a special group that reigns over something. So that's not all the faithful that are left because another group is mentioned, aren't they? And that is the multitudes. I want you to understand that the people that are beheaded are a special group and don't represent the rest of humanity. They cannot possibly represent the rest of humanity because they're only living in the last days when the mark is being put on people. What about all the other faithful people that lived before, which Revelation talks about as the multitudes? And I'm being very clear here because a lot of people think, oh, it's only the people that didn't receive the mark that well, let me let me let me stay on task here, okay? Because this is very very important. So we have a special group, and they don't represent the majority of the rest of the people that are saved. The multitudes of saved people are the ones from throughout history. Revelation does not say that the multitudes will also reign with Christ in heaven. They're a separate group. So. If you can somehow resist the mark, resist worshiping the beast and its image, then you get to be in a special group. So let's talk about these multitudes who will be saved in addition to the special group who refuse the mark. Now, by default, those multitudes of saved fall outside of the last day's remnant of the beheaded, right? Who neither took the mark or worship the beast. Probably all of the people living in before the last days. So let's read Revelation 7 9 about the multitudes. It says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Revelation 19.6 says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Now, that brings us to the last group, because some who were caused to take the mark will also worship the beast and those are the ones that were going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Let's read verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Now notice how Revelation 19.20 breaks this all up into separate actions, right? The mark, Receiving the mark is one action. Worshiping the beast is another action. And if you worship the image only, are you thrown into the lake of fire? Is one predicated on the other? Or is this all really additive? There's a reason why the author breaks it up into the different actions. And that's where you get the clue that when you receive the mark, but also worship the beast, that is when you're thrown into the lake of fire. Now, would God throw all free and bond, rich and poor, who were caused to take the mark, would he throw all those people into the lake of fire? I don't believe he would. Because the key word causeth all. As if there might not be a choice. To me, the way that I interpret this is that you must also worship the beast to be thrown into the lake of fire. Now let's keep reading in verse 15 for more clarification. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So, 
worshiping of the beast is mentioned before the mark in Revelation 13. The act of worshiping the beast, I'll say that again, is mentioned before the mark is given in Revelation 13. This suggests that it's a separate act than receiving the mark. And also a requirement to be thrown into the lake of fire. In other words, many will be killed for review, refusing the worship part of it. it. says right here in Revelation 13, 15. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So those who refused to worship the beast were killed. Okay. But it almost reads as if, and this is where you have to pray to God about this. And I'll explain how all this shakes out as we get toward the end of this explanation here. They probably received the mark, but then refused to worship the beast. So we have another group who are still killed for refusing to worship the beast, but they're separate from the group who was beheaded for somehow refusing the mark. So notice how Revelation breaks this up into groups. Now you can flowchart this. That's my suggestion because that's exactly what I did. This isn't some fly-by-night interpretation. I spent many, many years examining Revelation in these passages. And there is an explanation for all of it. So even though the beast will cause all to take the mark, that doesn't mean that all who are forced to take it are thrown into the lake of fire. You also have to worship the beast for that to happen. Now, I got into some debates and discussions with people about parts of this, and their, their point that they bring up is the word and or an or in Revelation that separates these actions. But here's another thing. Another clue that this interpretation is correct is that Revelation makes it a point to break these actions up into the different categories. Why would, they, why would the author do that? Why would he break it up into worshiping the beast, worshiping the beast's image, or receiving the mark? Why break it up in all those parts if it all leads to the same result? Because here's the thing. If it all led to the same result then the author would just state those actions in the beginning. And then from that point forward, he would just say, they're all thrown into the lake of fire for worshiping the beast. But it's specifically broken out into these parts. Now, again, I have to say this several times because people are going to say, Casey's he's telling everyone to take the mark. No, I'll say it again. Do everything within your power to resist the mark. Because guess what? Don't you want to be ruling with Jesus, reigning during the thousand years with Jesus? I want to. So, you refuse the mark. Now, if only the mark, just having the mark alone, already condemned you, why does Revelation go all, through all the trouble to break it up into these different actions? Receiving the mark, worshiping and worshiping the image. There's a reason for that. It's to be specific about what the different groups will and won't do and what your reward is if you refuse all of it. And it also gives a disposition of those who do commit these acts. So, what is up for debate here? Well, this really changes nothing about our belief in the Most High and His Son. The only thing really up for debate here is this question. Will there be a choice? And what I'm reading, it sounds like there may not be. I don't know how they would do it, put it in the water, who knows? I mean, they can put chips, microchips in water. Who knows? What if they put the microchip in a water and you have received the mark. Do you think you're going to be condemned to hell for that? For something you didn't know? Now some people are dead set on believing that it will be a choice. 
But I say to you, if you still think it will be a choice, then what does the causeth all mean? How do you reconcile that? Causeth all. Because if that part wasn't in there, then I would agree with you. That it, it might be a choice. Now, what else is there? Now, this, like I said, this interpretation doesn't really change anything in terms of our Christian beliefs because nothing changes the fact that we should all refuse the mark if it is within our power to do so, okay? And not worship the beast, absolutely not worship the beast. The core of the debate here in this interpretation is basically if the mark will be forced or not, if we will have a choice or not. That's really the core of this debate. And for that, we're going to have to wait and see because if it's forced, what happens to those who get it? Well, what happens to those who get it if it's forced? That's between God and that person. Now, that brings us to this passport chip. And embedded antenna preconditioning to force the mark or to cause all to take the mark. Preconditioning. This is not the mark, but it's preconditioning. Just like you have a chip in your credit card that you insert with your right hand into the ATM machine after entering your pen, which is your pineal in your forehead. These are preconditioning, gatekeeping acts to basically one day wrap all of this under one umbrella. The passport, the year buying and selling, and your health. Let's take a look at this 666 in the passport. Because what you're seeing here is 555. Now, many of you ask me, Casey, why is 555666? Well, I'm going to explain that to you right now. Let me check in with you guys real quick, make sure we're still connected. Very good. What is, how is 555666? Well, let's take a look. Vav, Vav, Vav in Hebrew is six. Six six. Let's take a look here. What did I do with that? Now, what is va va va? Well, it's these three lines. It's the lines on the monster drink can. Three vertical lines, va va va, which sounds like five five five, right? Va 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 is five five five. It's the same phonetic sound, but that's not all, because you can't just make that assumption, right? Because there's another confirmation that five 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 is six six six, and that is this. The height of the Washington Monument, five hundred fifty five feet tall, is six. 1,660 inches. So it appears as though the American standard of measure of length was actually designed to encode 555 is 666. It's almost like they did it intentionally. Because 555 feet equals 6,660 inches. What are the odds of that? Now, look at the 36 foot foundation. That's six times six, right? There's your other clue. Now, there's a metal band named Slipknot, and they know that 555 is 666 because they have a song that says that. 555 is 666. And, of course, our last clue are all the Hollywood phone numbers that you see in TV shows and movies. All of the prefixes begin with the number 555. It's a fictitious phone number. Now they call this a standard a standard fictitious number but now we know why because va 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 is 666 right? So 
now that we've established all of this, now we can look at this passport and understand where the 555s originate. Let's begin with this chip in the middle. Now this is in all passports. If you've had a passport after 2008, this is in your passport. I looked at mine and it's in it. This chip in the middle is a central part of the passport. Now you can't see this because it's inside the paper. This chip is actually in the shape of acrylic letter called F. This is it right here. This is the acrylic letter F. EF. And as you can see, it has the same general shape as the chip. What does the letter F equate to? Well, it's the number 500. So there's our first five right there in the middle in this chip. So where are the other two fives? Well, as you can see here, we have five concentric antenna. This is actually the antenna portion. Five concentric lines. And they all terminate in this central piece here, which connects to the chip. Forms a circuit. And look at this. We have one, two, three, four, five on this side and one, two, three, four, five on the other side. Five, five, and then five, the chip. There's your 666 inside the passport. Again, this is not the mark, but it's preconditioning. All of these things will be brought under one umbrella. And they want to make sure that they all are loaded up with their programming and symbolism and sorcery. So when the final mark comes about, it will contain all this. You will already be preconditioned to accept it. Or tricked into it somehow. Now, this 666 gaslighting is everywhere. We found it in many, many products, haven't we? Many, many places we've seen the 666. We've seen it in movie. We've seen it in Disney logos. We've seen it in beer logos. Here's the va 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 for those who want to see the visual on this, which is also www. Here is the Wonka, the new Wonka film. Even in the Willy Wonka film logo, we see the numbers 666. Can you guys see them? Can you see the 666 in the Willy Wonka logo? Let's see who gets it. Should probably draw this out for you guys. Let me see if let me see if we can do that. Um, let's click on this here. Open image in a new tab. There we go. Cost the resolution is horrible. Now we want to draw. Where's my drawing? I don't think it's enabled. But anyway, there's a there's the first six there in the W. The next six is in the O, which is connected to the N. There's a six there. And the final six is here in the bottom part of the K. There's your 666 right there. So this preconditioning is everywhere. They're doing this intentionally. Coca-Cola has a 666 in it as well. Pretty much all the logos do. And basically it's the way that they pledge their allegiance to the beast and the final mark that is to come. It's also to desensitize you to the 666. Right? Now, if, if this is... Any part of this is not resonating with you. Let me give you one last... Let me give you one last example. And that is this. Many, 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 many people that we love got tricked into getting the sticker, didn't they? And there are actual YouTube channels out now. These are there are a lot of really awesome people. Loving people, very good Christians. Right? 
very good Christians, many of which are more dedicated to the Most High than even myself or many of you. And sadly, we saw them take it, and we sadly, we saw them suffer. Does that mean they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire? No, because they were tricked, weren't they? They were deceived. So that's an example. Now, even though I don't believe that the pokey poke is the actual mark, I believe it's preconditioning. Why? Because you can still buy and sell without it, can't you? So that automatically disqualifies it from being the final mark. But it is preconditioning. To put something in your body that you feel you're forced to do. So the final mark will be the same thing, won't it? A lot of people will get tricked into it. Good people who live their life probably sin free and love the most high. But they got tricked into it or forced into it. Think about all the people in in the... Um, here's another example. Think about all the people in the nursing homes. Think about... Completely faithful people that were forced to take it. Why? Just because for the simple fact they were in a nursing home. Does that mean they are going to be thrown into the lake of fire? Absolutely not. So, hopefully this you can use critical thinking to understand everything that I said at the beginning of the show. Now, what else do we have here? Well, I have another update for you on 9-23. I think we had talked about this before, but I had forgotten. 9.23, that date of infamy. Look on your screen. Now we know the significance of 9.23. It is the 266th day of the year with 99 remaining. 66.99. This is probably why they chose this date. To seed into all of these movies, TV shows, and commercials. 923. Now what that means, well, 6699, that's the yin and yang. But it's also a portal number to some degree and all kinds of other other things associated with this as well. The going in, the coming out, the 66, the 99. The 99 red balloons. At some point, 923 will be a date of infamy. There's too much programming for it not to be. Now, tomorrow we'll be live again with some 2018 episodes of Blacklist. 2018, long before the pandemic, yet... They mention contagion. They mention treatment protocols. There are suffocation rituals. There are episodes that talk about an experimental vaccine that causes a massive autoimmune response that paralyzes half a man's face. Yes, it was all talked about in the Blacklist TV series in episodes from 2018, two full years before the pandemic. And all kinds of other crazy gaslighting. So, I'll show you those clips on tomorrow's show. And then we're also going to get caught up on the Honey Milk Ranch. I found out <laughs> there was a mystery animal that was walking off with dozens of giant rat poison blocks. These blocks were massive. I mean, they're not massive, massive, but for a small creature, like a, like a mouse. I mean, this thing weighs three times as much as the mouse. Yet, something was dragging off all these things. And so, okay, so we have some trolls. Let's take care of that, and then we'll finish up with the Honey Milk Ranch. But basically, I got this. I took my uh, I took my trail cam, and I stuck it where these blocks were to see w what this thing was, and I figured it out. So I'll share that with you guys on the end of tomorrow's show. I also got a hummingbird feeder that now has almost a dozen birds on it. So that's cool. And uh, I'll show you guys that as well. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy. I'm not going to tell you what the animal was yet. I want it to be a surprise. All right. Well, you guys, uh, I love each and every one of you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. If you need to, watch the show through a couple times. I know the Mark of the Beast is a really scary thing, and there's a lot of emotion behind it. But again, I ask you, would God send all the people in the nursing homes into the lake of fire? No, he wouldn't. 
because many of those people are very faithful people, much more faithful than people like us who are living in this last generation. These are people that have been married their whole lives, 50, 60 years, who love the Lord every day, pray every single day. Would he throw them into the lake of the fire for being forced to receive something that was against their will, that was a requirement of being in a nursing home? See, the devil wants you to hate God. So he wants you to think that God is going to destroy 90% of humanity. Well, Revelation says something different. It says there will be multitudes upon multitudes. And, if, and a loving God would also, if you were caused, all of you, great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive it, he would say, well, as long as you don't also worship the beast. And that would be a heart issue. That would be something you would have control over, right? Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to fall down in an act of worship. It's all throughout the Bible, you guys, this act of worship thing. The devil tempted Jesus. Fall down and commit an act of worship to me. Jesus said no. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, will you worship me? No. What else? It's all throughout the Bible. It's the worship that causes you to be thrown into the lake of fire. Solomon, same thing. Solomon ended up worshiping false gods. And so many, many, many more examples. You have to read the Bible in its entirety to understand the Bible. And it's okay to disagree with me, but at the end of the day, this discussion does not disqualify you from anything because ultimately the disposition of those who get it is up between God and them, right? Again, do not willfully take it, even if they try to force you to do it. You'd be better off dying than doing it, but there may not be a choice like the people in the nursing homes. All right, you guys, I love each and every one of you. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Much love.